Hey yo, I'm Sean Paul and this is a Content Kings exclusive. Oh, my God, I'm get the real name little. Oh boy, I don't even want to say it, you know, because it probably come for me. Yeah, I was in New York and actually a brother who used to go to school with me was a driveway. And my road manager in the car, in the van, and my, my management, I'm a brother there, I'm a DJ there, and a backup singer and myself. I'm going to drive through bed in Brooklyn, which is, uh, if you know where that, 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 are the, that are the tugging town, you know? And we're going towards the airport because we have to Belgium, see? And we stop at a stoplight and me I listen to music, so I'm not really pre too much and everybody else would depend on their phone and kind of some man asleep in the car and then the car drive off and enough so till, you know, me kind of jerk back like this and I say, yo, what go on? I'm bridging and I drive the car and I say, yo, yo, you see that? I said, no. I said, what? Because we had a smoke in there. A man said, yo, police, go for come touch the back of the van while I go and, and tell me, like, pull me over, but the light turned green, so I'm just going to have to see my driveway. <laughs> so in so the driveway, I'm going to say, light. So when we turn around, you know, and look, they have these little cop cars, like a one seater car in New York, where, like a, a traffic cop we sit on in. You know, see it get bigger and bigger, like it come towards me. I say, yo, the man are coming, the dog. I will go through a certain place and reach the next stoplight and there and he just come. So boom and pull up in front of me. And when I look, six police come from all corners just everywhere and say, yo, I'm come out of the vehicle. And it's like, damn. And then put you in a handcuff now. See? And it's like they were Christian and thing and thing. And it's not till a couple of girls start passing and say, hey that Sean Paul. I'm gonna see her with the handcuff on and they was like, who, which one, who, you, the, you're Sean Paul? Cause my name big New York and Ru and them. They never noticed says me and, you know what I mean? They was like, yo, so who for spliff this guy? But then they find out one spliff. And at the time in New York, it's like, when you take a dimmy, it's a, it's a misdemeanor, it's a little slap on the wrist type thing. So my brethren actually was driving us and take the, the, the thing for me. So big up my brethren, I'm not call your name. But well, a real brethren named that. And we were able to go on because through him claim it is female and him just got through the little court case and thing. But that's my problem with, with, with a lot of government policies and something that has clearly been used for many years and clearly been men beneficial to many more people. And I remember when I first started smoking weed, I hung out in you know, some little corners and some man was like, yo, you know what say? You don't see a man who is high very high on weed, like stumbling or slurring him speech type thing. That's what alcohol does to you. And they crash cars and, you know what I mean? They cause problem and havoc in people's life. It destroy your liver and all these things, and that's legal. And um, weed wasn't legal at the time. Or it was, you know, it was just like something that my father went to prison for, actually. And drop out a plane in, in drop out a, a, a out of the sky in a plane going to Miami with beer weed night and deported from the States and since 1984 never went back to the States and um, you know all these things like it, it, it almost was like no when I seen I don't want to call the man name but LaSalle's chin getting into sell, selling us CBDs which is a medicinal part of the weed I get it but it's just I don't want to say hypocritical, but it's sad, you know what I mean? Because my father was a society man then, as you want to call it. But, but what I'm to the ghetto youth, them and the people who are innocently um, getting this euphoria from this product, from this, this natural plant, which has not been proven to be harmful at all to anybody and more beneficial now than, than most people thought. Um, to all these kids going in jail for it, it really has hurt society in terms of economically, first of all, it drains the system. And then psychologically for the people that are put in that position, um, cause once you go to prison, you see and learn things that you, you never forget. And sometimes it puts you on a, a path that is wrong. Um, in life, I believe. I've never been to jail or prisons, but um, my father has. And it was always a thing over him head when he come out. He spent six years in GP, 
and it was because of something that was related of an incident of him sending away weed. And now there's just this big industry that happens, you know what I mean? So I'm not saying people need to be compensated, but I just see, think it is sad and that we needed, we should have Jamaica um, from way back when, from when Amsterdam had done it. And when you see the amount of money that it brought in for Amsterdam on a yearly basis, where some people over there were even vexed and saying, you know, you have to cut out this. When they were showing the figures, them promptly shut up. You know, them quickly shut up. So I think Jamaica should have moved towards it. We had, we had the product, we had the, um, the marketing feat as in terms of when people look to the figures like Bob Marley or just Rasta in general and that whole sea, sun, sun and sensei in Jamaica, that vibe. I think it should have been utilized by our government way before it's been done now. And now, of course, it seems that there's monopoly on it and that the true farmers who were hiding in hills and giving us this great, great uh, plant all these years is, is being, for the most part, left out of that circle. So that is all sad to me. And I think it has led to change in what our product is and not for the better. I don't really love any dispensers weed. Sorry to say. Here and abroad, I'll find few that I go to in America too, because I find that it's just a science computerized kind of vibe now. And it takes from the real thing of the plant. And, um, I'm talking about actually what it tastes like and actually how, how hard it really hit you. That has changed to me and as, and as you kind of struggle to search and find the right people. And I still buy from farmer, from people who is like not in a retail store, you know?